Hello and welcome to the first in a series of lab videos that we'll use to finish up the course materials for Chemistry 112 Lab during the spring semester of 2020. This week is Experiment 8, Unknown Acids. Our twofold motivation for this lab is to first determine the concentration of our unknown acid as secondly uh, the identity of this unknown acid. As part of your pre-lab assignment, you're asked to look up and cite the Ka and pKa values for these five weak monoprotic acids. And the reason is that the actual identity of our unknown acid is one of these five. When you write this lab report, start with your pre-lab assignment, and then the rest of the lab report and your lab notebook should be as complete and as detailed as if you were actually doing this lab in person and not just watching a video of it. So that has full procedures, your observations should be as detailed as possible, Results section, minimally for this lab, it should include a properly labeled titration curve, show all the work for your calculations, and then as always have a discussion, and minimally that discussion should include the answers to the discussion questions we'll talk about in the next slide. When you're finished with your lab report, you can scan your lab report pages. If not, at the very least take legible pictures, convert those to a file, and then upload that file via the Experiment 8 lab report upload link on your lab Moodle page. The discussion questions are first, what is the identity of your unknown acid? And then explain your rationale for that conclusion. Secondly, what is the concentration of your unknown acid? So notice these first two are just your questions of the day. Thirdly, so we'll use a pH indicator to describe what that pH indicator is, and then also draw some conclusions to whether or not it was a good choice for this particular titration. Keep in mind kind of what the purpose of an indicator might be for an acid-based titration. And finally, describe several experimental errors or otherwise experimental assumptions and what the effect of those errors and assumptions may be on the results. Would they make the final result too high, too low, or in some cases may not have an effect at all. This week, we'll be doing experiment eight, unknown acids. And our twofold objectives are to determine both the concentration and the identity of this weak acid. We have to be able to accomplish both those objectives with just one experiment. And an experiment is to carefully react our unknown weak acid with a known substance, strong base, in a known way. So weak acid plus strong base produces water and a salt represented as NaA, A being the conjugate base of our weak acid. Our setup is that we'll fill our burette with approximately 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, and then in our beaker where the titration will occur, we'll have five milliliters of weak acid solution, 20 milliliters of deionized water, and two drops of an indicator of our choice. In order to be able to follow the chemistry of what's occurring as the weak, weak acid reacts with some hydroxide, we'll have a pH meter and a pH electrode inserted into our solution. As the experiment proceeds, we are going to collect data, specifically pH readings, as a function of volume of some hydroxide. And this raw data is provided to you as part of an Excel spreadsheet. From this data, we'll then plot it specifically this way, where we have pH on the y-axis, volume of some hydroxide on the x-axis. And we do that, what we expect to find is a titration curve, so the S-shaped titration curve, where initially the pH starts off changing, but also but changes very slowly initially. It'll change, increase rapidly for a time, and then continue to increase, but once again, slowly. And of all these data points on our titration curve, the most important one is what's called the equivalence point. And the equivalence point is, can be approximated as the midpoint of our titration curve, the midpoint of our steep portion of the titration curve specifically. So this is our equivalence point, which for our purposes, we can estimate it as the midpoint of the titration. The reason why this particular point is so important 
and why specifically this equivalence point volume is so important is because at that point, we've added just enough some hydroxide to fully react with the amount of weak acid we had originally in our container. So at that point, in other words, the reaction is complete. So because of that, if I can figure out, calculate how many moles or millimoles of sodium hydroxide I had delivered at that point, then that number is necessarily equal to the amount of weak acid I had originally in my container. I can calculate this number because the mole sodium hydroxide is always equivalent to the concentration of sodium hydroxide, the number on our label, times the volume of sodium hydroxide that I've added to that point, times our equivalence point volume. But if we use moles, we have to be careful here, we want to make sure our equivalence point volume is in liters. All right, those two numbers is the moles of hydroxide and at the equivalence point, that is my moles of weak acid. So I'll calculate, in other words, the amount of weak acid I had originally in my container by multiplying the concentration of some hydroxide by the equivalence point volume. I can then find the concentration of the weak acid, the molar concentration, by dividing that amount of weak acid, that number of moles of weak acid, by the volume of weak acid I start with. Once again, if we use moles, this volume needs to be in liters. So we divide our moles of weak acid by the volume of weak acid that we start with, both units of liters. So that's my concentration of weak acid calculation. And then to find the identity, we'll also use this, the same set of data. This time though, we'll look at a different point. We'll look at this region of the titration curve after the titration started, but before we reached the equivalence point. So approximately in this region of the curve. In this area, in this region, I've started titration, but I haven't completed yet. So I do have some unreacted weak acid present, but as the titration has started, I've also produced some of this weak acid's conjugate base. Consequently, in this region, we have a buffer, which is why the pH changes, but changes very slowly. So because we do have a buffer, the pH of any buffer is equal to the pKa of the weak acid plus the log of the ratio of the molar concentration of the conjugate base to the molar concentration of the weak acid. At a particular point in this region, specifically so this halfway point, in other words, when the volume is one half the equivalence point volume, I started titration, but I'm halfway there. So as a result, I've converted half of my original acid into its conjugate base. Consequently, at that point, the concentration and or the amount of weak acid left is the same as the concentration or amount uh, the conjugate base, so therefore this ratio is equal to one, log of one is equal to zero, so then at that point the pH is equal to, or at least approximately equal to, the pKa of my weak acid. So I'll find the equivalence point, from the equivalence point be able to directly calculate the concentration of the weak acid, and then at the halfway to the equivalence point, the pH at that point is then an estimate of the pKa of the weak acid. I'll compare this pKa value to the pKa values of the possible weak acids from pre-lab assignment, and whichever weak acids pKa gives me the best match, I then conclude must be the identity of my weak acid. 